Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jean Cunet. I'm Next Pharma Chief Scientific Officer. And uh, today, after a brief uh, presentation on Next Pharma development and manufacturing capabilities, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the design of modified release drug product using multi-unit particulate systems and multi-layered uh, tablets. So uh, Next Pharma has been created in, in year 2000, although uh, its history, uh, site history, goes back uh, 50 years ago. We are uh, supplying uh, all continents, uh, and we have today uh, about 150 customers. We are supplying uh, out of our uh, German uh, and French um, operations in uh, Lime and, and in Germany. Uh, and uh, we are building on this strong heritage uh, to uh, become a global contract development and manufacturing organization and provide our customers with tailor-made uh, uh, project approach uh, for the success of their project. So we have about uh, 1,000 employees out of six uh, manufacturing centers. Uh, we uh, have, as I said, 150 customers, seven out of 10 uh, of the big pharmaceutical companies. We have today one global uh, development organization across five uh, specialized center of excellences. Uh, and we, our scientists handle uh, more than 150 projects a year. Our expertise and development capabilities are around three areas, um, solid dosage forms with immediate release and modified release tablets, and I will talk about that uh, in, uh, in more details, um, as well as pellets, uh, capsules, granules, uh, powders, and effervescents. We also work in the field of uh, semi-solids with suppositories and topical dosage forms and non-sterile uh, liquid dosage forms. We have some uh, specialities uh, with a dedicated center uh, and manufacturing plant in hormones, uh, also uh, in the field of beta-lactams with penicillins and cephalosporins, and we also can handle uh, controlled drug substances. As I said, we have a deep expertise in modified release um, dosage forms, uh, as well as um, expertise in developing pediatric dosage forms, which ensure dose flexibility and test masking. So what we can develop, of course, uh, we can uh, manufacture. Uh, so in, uh, in France, uh, we manufacture liquids and suppositories. Uh, in Waltrop, in Germany, we manufacture uh, hormonal products, as well as in a dedicated uh, other area, uh, non-hormonal non uh, semi-solids. In Bielefeld, uh, we have uh, dedicated center for modified release dosage forms as well as a, uh, a top of the art analytical development center. And in Bielefeld, we handle penicillins and in Gottingen, cephalosporin and in other, another plan, conventional solid dosage forms. So let's focus uh, on modified uh, release dosage forms with multi-unit particulate systems. As you know, uh, Multi-unit particulate systems uh, presents many advantages when compared to a single unit uh, modified release system. Uh, it can reduce the impact of uh, dose dumping on efficacy and safety. Uh, it, uh, we can increase the flexibility in, in dose regimen as well as uh, in the release profiles you can provide within uh, one dosage form, uh, thereby increasing patient compliance. Uh, and, and reducing cost of treatment as well. Um, and uh, last but not least, pellets uh, will distribute over a large surface area within the GI tract when compared to a, a tablet, a large tablet, uh, which has potential for increased bioavailability by reducing local concentration at, at the site of absorption, as well as reducing intra and uh, inter-individual PK variability. Uh, pellets uh, will be less prone to food effect when compared to single unit dosage form uh, and are also uh, less affected by gastrointestinal uh, transit time as uh, demonstrated by a, a nice study 
performed by uh, Garbax and colleagues, where they looked at the um, uh, PK profile following administration of uh, diclofenac uh, as a single um, unit dosage form as a, as a sustained release tablet in panel A uh, versus uh, sustained release pellets in panel B. As you can see from these two graphs, uh, with the following absorption of the tablet, you can see multiple absorption peaks uh, with, the, with the tablet, which did not occur uh, following administration of the of the pellets, so um, multi-unit uh, particulate systems offer advantages. As I said, uh, they can be prepared uh, by different methods. The most common are extrusion spheronization or drug layering on non pareil beads. Uh, for extrusion spheronization, so you can uh, wet your mass uh, with an aqueous system or also a, a lipid system. Uh, this wetted mass will be extruded uh, and spheronized to form uh, nice spherical pellets that will be dry to ensure chemical stability of your product and increase the density of your product. Uh, what is becoming more popular and also uh, more efficient because less uh, process steps uh, is uh, hot melt extrusions where you melt the API together with the matrix um, and you compact uh, through uh, uh, twin screws uh, to form your extrudates, it's continuous manufacturing process, one single step, uh, and then you can also spheronize. Uh, to provide a sustained release or delayed release, you will of course coat with top spray, bottom spray, or tangential spray. Uh, it's important to characterize uh, your pellets in terms of particle size distribution, shape, uh, surface morphology with uh, scanning electron microscopy, specific surface area, you can use gas absorption, Look at the friability, the density, and the porosity of your pellets, and of course, disintegration time and dissolution profiles. You can use uh, MUPS, multi unit particulate system, for a number um, of applications. One of them to, is to increase bioavailability uh, of polywater soluble compounds, which I will illustrate with this case study uh, from Zhang and colleague, uh, where they um, looked at. Um, combining the effect of a self-emulsifying drug delivery system to improve solubilization within G the GI tract of pure rarin uh, and together combined with sustained release to uh, decrease uh, local concentration at the site of absorption and thereby uh, preventing uh, drug precipitation. Uh, so this is a polysoluble drug used in the treatment of uh, cardiovascular conditions. Uh, which is available on the, on the market, but today uh, uh, requires uh, several administrations, high daily doses, uh, and, and therefore are associated with poor patient compliance. So um, they solubilized uh, the API, Pure within uh, self emulsifying drug delivery systems composed of castor oil as a lipid phase, cremophore EL, uh, as surfactant and propion DL as co-solvent, and they use this um, lipid system as a wetting agent uh, to wet the mass of uh, HPMC and microcrystalline cellulose to provide sustained release of pure rarin, rarin um, uh, and, and to extrudate and spheronize. Uh, so they looked at uh, different ratios of HPMC to MCC to control the release rate uh, of the API, and as you can see, they obtain, uh, obtain nice spherical pellets of approximately 50 nanometers uh, that are characterized here by uh, tomography and scanning electron microscopy. On this graph, you can see the uh, release profile of uh, Puerarin following uh, oral administration uh, of uh, the SMED system, the pure SMED system, so uh, fast uh, solubilization and uh, absorption, uh, which is not what they were looking for. You can see that the API on its own uh, only dissolve up to 30% uh, after 600 minutes. And uh, you can see the different release profile of this uh, SMED uh, sustained release pellets uh, at different ratio of HPMC to MCC. Of course, increasing the proportion of HPMC slowed down the, the release profile, and they could tailor-made that way 
um, the release of, of the API. Uh, they administered uh, the SMED sustain release pellets uh, in uh, Beagle Dogs as well as the tablet uh, in Field Square. And here you can see the plasma concentration of pyrarin over time. Uh, and they obtain uh, an increase of relative bioavailability of uh, more than uh, twofold following administration of the SMED sustained release pellets versus uh, the tablet. So um, it's an illustration of the effectiveness uh, of these uh, dosage forms to enhance uh, bioavailability of polywater soluble compounds. Uh, Multi-unit particulate systems can be um, yeah, presented in a, in a numerous number of uh, final dosage forms. At Next Pharma, we can fill uh, them in capsules. We can also uh, fill them together with uh, other capsules, tablets, uh, liquids. We can fill pellets in stick packs. And we can, of course, compress uh, uh, pellets into tablets to obtain MUPS pellets. Uh, tableting of coated pellets can be complex uh, because uh, you may lose integrity of the polymer, uh, which will uh, polymer coat, which will affect your release profile. Uh, uh, and when you increase apply pressure, of course, you run into the risk of deforming uh, your pellets, surface of even core of the pellets. Uh, so you need to look at uh, different factors that can influence uh, the tableting of multi-unit particulate systems, uh, which are linked to formulation variables, such as the uh, type uh, and composition uh, of your uh, core pellets, such as the polymer you will use and plasticizer and the thickness of your coat, as well as the uh, uh, fillers that you, uh, you use for tableting. Well, of course, you need to look at compression forces and speed, which uh, are process variables that will uh, impact the integrity of your reservoir systems uh, and equipment variables such as uh, tablet machine design, tooling design, and the way you feed uh, your tablet press. So this uh, moves us nicely to uh, multi-layer tablet and bilayer tablet uh, as a, a way to efficiently combine um, and, and produce design fixed dose combination product associating uh, API requiring immediate release and API uh, requiring modified release um, uh, of, 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 the, of the API, uh, which I will illustrate with a, a case study of a fixed dose combination of uh, metformin uh, hydrochloride, which requires a sustained release, and uh, glypizide, uh, which is uh, associated as immediate release. They are both used in the treatment of type 2 uh, diabetes patients. Uh, metformin hydrochloride uh, is used to slow sugar absorption in the small uh, intestine and to stop the conversion uh, of uh, stored sugar into the blood. Uh, it's an hydrophilic compound with a very short half-life uh, and therefore uh, requiring sustained release, uh, but it has a good oral bioavailability. Uh, Today, it is um, administered two to three times a day, uh, which, uh, of course, is uh, uh, enduring uh, patient compliance. And this is associated with uh, glypizide, uh, which is used to reduce uh, blood glucose. So the aim of this study was to improve patient compliance, moving to a multi-dose regimen uh, per day to a once-daily dosing by enabling the sustained release of uh, metformin hydrochloride over 12 hours, associated to an immediate release uh, glypizide in one unit dosage form, a bilayer tablet. Uh, so they screen uh, different composition uh, in terms of uh, type of cellulose derivative uh, used uh, to impact the release profile uh, of metformin hydrochloride using uh, HPMCs of increasing viscosities and also investigated the impact uh, of uh, different ratio of uh, HPMC to MCC. On the left hand side, you can see um, the release profile over time uh, of metformin hydrochloride uh, in black curve 
and the immediate release uh, of uh, glipizide, uh, 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 and, and this for the formulation containing uh, increasing uh, HPMC of increasing viscosity. And as you can see, uh, the viscosity of the HPMC did not impact the release of uh, metformin. Uh, on the contrary, on the right-hand side, you can see that when increasing uh, levels of uh, HPMC, of course, to MCC, uh, you uh, uh, modify the release profiles toward slower uh, release uh, profile. So, uh, yeah, they obtained dissolution profile. We did not quite follow uh, zero-order or first-order release, but they obtained the desired uh, metformin release profile uh, with a complete release over uh, eight hours. And uh, as I said, the release was not affected by the viscosity. And, and this is probably due uh, to the high solubility of uh, metformin hydrochloride being a salt uh, and the high dose uh, of this API within the bilayer tablet. Uh, metformin was released through uh, a diffusion mechanism, which explained uh, the faster release at the beginning and then uh, a, a slower release after two hours. So to conclude, uh, modified release drug delivery systems offer good life cycle management opportunities to reduce uh, dosing frequency, thereby improving patient compliance and enhancing oral bioavailability, which reduce uh, the cost of treatment. Um, uh, it is... Uh, also, uh, versatile technologies to develop delayed and sustained release drug delivery systems that can be uh, used for fixed dose combination products. Uh, and at Next Pharma, uh, with our expertise, we'd be happy to uh, support your, your projects uh, looking at fixed dose combination and modified release product. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have uh, more questions on our development and manufacturing capabilities, I invite you to uh, pass by our uh, stand, which is uh, on this floor around the corner next to the main entrance. Uh, and we'll be happy uh, to receive you for our customer event with nice uh, wine and food uh, right about now. Thank you.